Hi, I'm Dr. Latcher, and today we're going to talk about how to take pictures of horse feet. These pictures will be great for your veterinarian, for your farrier, or if you stay through to the end, we'll talk about how to put them into hoof map, which will help you see what your horse's feet are doing. Let's start by talking a little bit about what we're doing. We're going to take pictures from the side, the front, and then we're going to take a picture picking up the foot and looking at the bottom of the foot. Frequently, I get pictures that have very obviously been shot from here. You can see that that's less than useful when what I really need to see is the hoof from here. So a couple things we're going to take into consideration are that the horse is standing straight on the leg. We don't have it super far back or super far in front of them because that will change all of the things we see on the foot. So we want to make sure that they are standing very square on the foot. The next thing we're going to look at is where the cameras are on our phone. We want the cameras on the ground. So when you take this shot, make sure that you set your camera on the ground flat as opposed to up high. When you have it up high, you actually end up aiming here, and we want to aim for right here. So keep your camera on the ground. The next consideration we're going to have is that we are straight out from the foot. And we want to be far enough out that when we look on the picture we're shooting, we have some blur right in this area here. We actually don't want this area in focus because we want the foot in focus. So now I'm just going to tap my screen so that the foot comes into focus. I will get up high again and see, am I straight to the foot? Do I need to do a little adjustment? And then I will go ahead and I take the picture. Make sure your camera or your phone is also straight up and down. If it's angled, that's going to do some wonky things to the feet too. And we want the best picture we can. So I'm paying a lot of attention that I'm straight to the foot. And if I look at my picture I shot, what I should get is that I have one line for the front of the foot and I have one set of heels. That sounds obvious, right? But if you come around this way too far, you get, you can see both sides of the heel. If you come around this way too far, you can see the curvature of the front of the toe. And that, again, will change all of the things that we have on the, the picture in a way that won't give us as good of information. So we want to make sure we're straight to the side, we're far enough away that we have some blur in this area, and then we focus on the foot by tapping the, the foot to get that focus. So that's from the side. All right, now we're going to shoot what we call the DP shot. And D stands for dorsal, which is our fancy name for the front of the leg. P on the front leg stands for palmer. On the back leg stands for plantar. And that is just the back of the leg. So we call this the DP shot. Uh, it is a little bit easier than the hind leg. But again, we want to make sure she's standing very square on the leg so that we get the best information we can. Most of what this photo gets us is how our balance from side to side is and if we've got a lot of flare on the foot. So that's what we're going to use this picture for. If you guys notice, a little pro tip here, I'm kneeling on a balance pad. Makes my knees a lot happier for this process. And you've all got balance pads in your barn because you watched our balance pad video. If you didn't, go back and watch that. But again, I'm going to take the phone camera to the ground. I'm going to set it in front of the hoof. And I want it far enough in front that I get a good, good panoramic of that foot. I am going to tap again to make sure that we're in focus there, and then go ahead and take the picture. Again, kind of bringing yourself up or having a helper to, to help you make sure that you are nice and perpendicular to that foot really helps you get that, that perfect image. And I mean, phones have a lot of space for a lot of pictures. So if in doubt, take a lot of them, and then your veterinarian or farrier can help you pick out the best. All right, the bottom of the foot shot is useful to show you know, what's going on on the bottom, and it's a good balance shot. There's a really useful template in hoof map for this shot 
but it can be a little tricky to take. So I pick up the foot. You're gonna think about your cameras being centered to the foot. So when you hold your phone over, it may be on the side as opposed to, you know, directly over the center of the foot. So I, I get the foot up, then I give myself enough room on the phone when I'm looking at the picture that I have space around. For most phones, you can use your volume key to take a picture. You're gonna wanna do that for this because you need three hands to take this picture. So I come up, have enough space around it, make sure that I'm centered. You know, I've got the foot nice and centered there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take that picture. And again, if in doubt, take more. Move things around. You know, you never know which one's gonna be the right one. So just take a bunch and see what you got. But the goal is to be centered over the hoof and that I have the entire hoof in the image and I've got space around the edges to see what's going on. So that's the bottom of the hoof picture. All right, so now we've got great pictures. Let's figure out what to do with them. I love to use the app called Hoof Map, and here we are in their opening page. Uh, the way that you put pictures in, go up to the top right corner, you'll see that plus mark. We're gonna go to the name. These are Vespa's feet, so we're gonna pick Vespa, and I'm gonna hit the check mark. From here, I'm gonna hit add photo, and then you can see we have options down below. So on her, I have the pictures we took previously, so I'm just gonna go to photos. And then I'm going to select what photo I want based on which one I thought was the best. You can see here, you can see that we have that fuzziness in the front of the picture like we talked about on the how to take pictures video. And then we've got the hoof in the background. So I'm going to use two fingers pinch to make it a bigger picture. And I'm going to make sure that I try to get the hoof horizontal, like so that the ground level is level. You can be careful that you can do a whole lot of this and you want to try to keep the picture as level as possible. You do want to make sure that you have room all the way around it uh, because when we put the templates on, it's helpful to have a bit of room to see some of the numbers that pop up. So you don't want to make it giant. You want to give yourself a reasonable amount, you know, kind of here all the way around so you can see stuff. All right, now I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to tap the box that has the shadow around it. That brings up this menu. So here I'm going to type right front because that's what we've got. And then I'm going to add a template. I always start with COR when I'm shooting regular feet and that stands for center of rotation. Now we're going to hit that back arrow top left corner and that brings us here. So this defaults to this direction. So if you look, there's kind of hash marks on the end and there's one in the, the middle. That mark is one third of the way from one side, two thirds of the way from the other. And when we put it on the coronary band, it shows us the where the center of rotation should be. This one, however, is going the wrong direction. So I'm just gonna grab a side and spin it around. And then I'm gonna set it where the hair meets the hoof on the front. And then again, where the hair meets the hoof on the back. Now my phone has a pen, which makes this easier uh, to get it precisely there. You'll notice I'm not directly on the coronary band and that's okay. Most horses have a little bit of a curve to it. The other thing you'll notice is there's a number that says 24. And that is the angle that that line is making to the ground surface. Not necessarily a big deal, but if you're looking to monitor that you're trying to make that angle higher or lower, it's a great way to do that. Uh, this is particularly useful in hind feet. So the next thing I'm going to do with that is I'm going to go back up to that box with the shadow underneath it. I'm going to hit add template and I'm going to hit base percent, the back arrow again. And now we're going to bring this up so that that hash mark is on the front of the toe. This one is on the heel. And then we're going to grab the green line and drop it and slide it. You can see I can slide it until it lines up to that hash mark. And what you see there is the percentage of the foot that is behind the center of rotation versus in front of the center of rotation. For a barefoot horse like Vespa is in this picture, 
you want that number to be about 60-40. So she's pretty close. And never do we trim or shoe horses to exact numbers. These are just guidelines. So again, here you see that she is 58-42. You could also see that if we wanted to adjust that number, we could put a shoe on her and bring some shoe out behind her. We could move her break over back. You know, there's a number of different ways that we can manipulate these numbers, and that's what shoeing does for us. But overall, what this gives us is just a, an idea of where things are. Now, if your horse is wearing a shoe, you want to watch up on the front end to see if there's rocker, you'll see there's air underneath the foot right here and you're gonna bring this hash mark to the point where the shoe actually hits the ground, it's usually farther back than the toe. So again, keep an eye on that, but that's how we use that template. Next one that I'll often use is I'll go back to that box with a shadow under it. I'm gonna hide the base percent because it gets really busy, and then I'm gonna look at the toe to heel, so T2 heel. And what this tells us is a bunch of different things about the toe and the heel. So I'm going to bring this up to where the heel touches. I'm going to bring this up almost to where the toe touches. And the reason this one is coming a little farther is we're going to take this line and bring it down the front of the hoof. And to do that, we often need to go past where the hoof actually is. To get some other information, we're going to take it up to the level of the coronary band uh, hair so that we've got some, some info there. And I'm going to drop it such that most of the line touches the front of the hoof. That's the hard part. Now we're going to drop this and we're going to go to this angle here. So again, we're making the angle that the, the wall of the heel makes and then we're going up to the level of the coronary band. So you can see on this foot that we have the number 100 on the heel and the number 206 on the toe. That means that the toe is 2.06 times as long as the heel. So the heel is always going to be 100. The toe is always going to be a number bigger than 100, and it's a ratio. So we're 2.06 to 1 here. Uh, there's some work showing that in normal feet with appropriate breakover and length of foot, that number should be 3 to 1. Now that work was done in shod horses, not barefoot, and Vespa here is barefoot, so there's probably some differences there. But again, it's just good information to have to see what you got. The other thing we see are these numbers, the 46 and the 58. There is also work, and again, this is on shod horses, to show that if these numbers are within five degrees of each other, that's what sound horses had, and horses who had lameness issues had larger than five degrees. And again, that was done in shod horses. Vespa here is barefoot, so those same rules probably don't apply. And again, that's one paper, we haven't really seen repeatability on it, but again, it's, a, it's good information to see. So that is what we do with the lateral view. So we've done the lateral one. Now let's look at what we can do with the ground surface one. Again, we're gonna go to add photo. We're gonna pull it from our photos that we've already taken because we already took them. And we're gonna get this solar surface view of Vespa's foot. Now this picture you realistically need to use a trimmed foot with no shoe on it to get the most information, but you don't have to. Uh, again, we're gonna try to center the picture and we're gonna make sure we don't make it wonky. We're gonna make it centered and horizontally acceptable. <laughs> uh, so there, we're gonna call that good. So now we're gonna go back up here. I'm gonna call this one solar right front and we're gonna add a template. So for this one, we start with the sole COR, and so that is sole center of rotation. Come back to the foot, and you want to take this point. You're going to go to the point where the heel stops, essentially. And so that is the heel comes around and then starts to go forward. That's where we're looking to put this point. On the front end, you're going to drop straight down and you want to make sure it's straight. This is, again, these are sort of guidelines, but you, you don't want to do this. You want to drop straight down. We're going to do the same with this one, and you'll see it's not quite straight on Vespa across the bottom, which is not, 
that's very normal for a horse that's barefoot in particular, and she toes in, so that helps, doesn't help any of that any. You can also see she toes in here that her heel here, so her medial heel, is farther forward than her lateral heel. Uh, again, very typical of a barefoot horse, and these are some of the things that we would go for fixing if she had shoes on. So now we're going to come back and we're going to add a template, and we're going to do the sole ratio. And I'll show you how this one goes. So that green line, when all is said and done, is going to be on the X. But first we're going to use two fingers and make this wide enough that it goes just about to where our, our lines come, you know, where our points come up at the top. And then we're going to take that green line and we're going to drop it to where the X is. Now our goal here is that this, one second, I'm going to add one more line for you guys so you can see what I'm talking about is that this green line is also on the widest part of the foot. Now, Vespa's foot is a little long and skinny, but we're, we're probably close to that widest part of the foot location. We want the widest part of the foot to be where the X crosses, and we want 50% of the foot behind it and 50% of the foot in front of it. And again, we're going to the white line, not the, the hoof wall area that's past the white line. That's, you know, if we come down here, we don't, we're not using this part here. That is white line to wall. So that tells us that this is a relatively balanced trim that is appropriate to what a barefoot horse should have. So really, really, really great information you can do live while your farrier is there trimming the foot to tell you if things are going well. So that's a little bit about how to take pictures of feet to give your veterinarian and farrier really useful information. Also, some tips and tricks for using HoofMap. They have a Facebook group as well, so if you want to get into HoofMap, download the app from the, the Play Store or the Apple Store uh, and, and get your pictures in there and just start playing around and see what you got. As always, if you've got any questions, drop them down below. And a huge thank you to our patrons. We can't do what we do without you. So thank you.